Brandon Straka, who left the acting profession. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, maybe it was just because it was a lack of opportunity. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was, it's hard, super hard for a white guy to get a job in acting uh, these days and modeling. And so he left. But he still has the heart of an artist. This is the guy who was famous for the Walk Away campaign. You'll remember the Walk Away campaign. It was started after Donald Trump was elected to president. And since that time, the walk away campaign was so successful that the Democrats took control of the House uh, in uh, 2018 with record uh, turnout. And then they took control of the Senate and the House in 2020 and the presidency. So the walk away campaign sort of stalled well that's because mm. you're counting all those illegal votes but typical of a you know, democratic Fair enough. Shill, yeah. I, I mean do. and i guess it's wrong for me to say stalled because it's unclear that it was ever w- moving yeah so maybe it just like didn't stall it just never ever left the gate but that's why it's so beautiful that straka maintained the heart of an artist put this up he writes every artist hopes their work will be seen talked about and provoke a reaction in its audience the liberal media just made me into the most successful performance artist in the country Mm. in just 24 hours wow and um now he doesn't seem like terribly grateful uh for that but uh he did a performance at uh the january 6th which in some ways And this is the interesting thing about art. Art tells the truth through fiction. And, of course, the fiction here is that Straka was in jail for January 6th. Now, we know that he wasn't because he gave so much information to uh, the federal prosecutors that um, presumably will help them put other people in jail that they let Mm -hmm. him go. He maintains, though, that he just gave talk, uh, gave compliments about his friends on January 6th. And they said, we love your character so much that we're just going to let you go on probation. Now, I have an alternate theory because, of course, it is art. So you can't necessarily everyone looks at this with a subjective eye. Yeah, there's no right answer. There is no right answer. But let's look at this. This is where Marjorie Taylor Greene visits Brandon Straka in Brandon Straka's prison slash booth at CPAC where he is a uh he is in an orange jumpsuit but also got to keep his uh, make america great thing in no his... shoes yeah though. hard for him to walk no away. shoes but they do give him a blackboard like uh, you always get in in prison where you get to um do tallies you do tallies on your days <laughs> that you've been in there this oh my god she's really breaking down you know there's more than one message i would like to get across uh if i kept it as general as possible what i would like to say i guess at this point is that even for the people i think everybody is in agreement that anybody who committed violence vandalism who caused extreme fear on that day needs to pay an appropriate price for what they did but there are a lot of people who are suffering i think unduly i think it's very disproportionate to what they actually did and even more than that i would like to say at this point that the hatred on both sides has to stop it's it's time to forgive people who made mistakes on both sides it's time to start seeing each other as human beings again and it's time to stop uh, enjoying and, and taking pleasure in the suffering of other people we have an audience kind of built in here uh, we had already decided to have a booth and get the kind of the real estate space. So I said, rather than in my mind, I said, rather than make it so um, sort of abstract, let's literally uh, put up a cell. Let's literally try as best we can to kind of create the, the size and the conditions of what people are going through. I'll put on the suit. Um, I think this speaks for itself. And um, try to convey to people the loneliness, the despair, the suffering, and um, 
the pain I think that a lot of people are going through. And I want to make something really clear because I know that there are going to be a lot of critics out there who say that I'm justifying criminal behavior or that I'm in some way glorifying the wrongdoing. I'm not. Pause it, incidentally. Oh my God, he's. I would say that there's a 75% chance that that's part of his uh, plea deal was that he cannot deny uh, that there was law breaking on that day um, publicly, I would imagine. Even during a yeah. performance art ex- exhibition, Just, you, ha- you cannot deny. There must be there some truth. There is also an alternate. Um, take on this because the artist would never ever really express what what this is always about like that way i mean they may describe it but really it is in the eyes of the beholder and when i look at this piece and i experience it and i've watched it on video many times i wonder if this isn't really more autobiographical it's not so much that straka is in a cage because or a jail cell because um of what he did on january 6th he's a bird Mm. he's a bird in a cage a songbird Mm. singing sang who sang a song about where is everyone that's what's on the uh, blackboard behind him well you sang a song and they all went to jail. Yeah, where was Do you Ellie mean my Alexander? co-conspirators? <laughs> where where are my exactly. co-conspirators? Exactly. Where are I, my friends? Look, the best art uh, is made under constraints and right now Straka has sort of tightrope uh, to walk, which is like he doesn't want to say anything that puts him in any more legal jeopardy because he's trying to put that behind him. But he also is trying to see, be seen fighting for the guys who might be actually still locked up and being like, I wonder if people are ratting uh, me out right. on top. <laughs> right. Well, he has to create physical constraints for himself as well. So he has to con- construct a something physical to represent his aggrievement, right? Yeah, that's, I mean, there's a lot of different takes on this. It is, that's, that's what, that's how you know it's art. Yeah. And then, Multifaceted. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene comes and kneels down before you. And yes. was, was she praying or was she actually talking to him? Like, I don't like, know what that like, was. It sounded like she was saying, we're going to do something about this when we get into, like, and at one point. She I, said I, when I we want, take back Congress. Yeah, I was yeah. wondering if, like, at one point he said, I, I'm not really in jail. I'm at CPAC. We're at CPAC. This is not real. I wonder if he had to say that at one point. 